So uh, our uh, message this morning comes from the gospel reading in John 8, just uh, the first couple of verses again, 31 and 32. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. This is the, uh, the gospel. This is our, uh, our uh, uh, text for this morning. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, it's Reformation. <clears throat> I want to talk about Luther for just a minute. To get us started off. Uh, he wasn't very different from anybody else in those days. He was very Catholic, and uh, he was confused about many things. Uh, his first battle, really, was that uh, as he read... Uh, those very verses in, in uh, Romans 3, he thought he had to be holy in himself to belong to Christ. Well, of course, that would be a little frustrating since nobody is that. He uh, went to a lot of trouble and beat himself up and his, uh, his pastor had to tell him to, to be nice to himself a little bit. But eventually he did finally understand the gospel that was there, uh, that it was Christ that saved him, that Christ was the one who chose him. And once he understood that, and then he was able to speak for the people of the church, and the Reformation began. Uh, that first battle was a tough one, though. These people that uh, John is speaking to here, well, John is uh, writing it down, it's Jesus that's speaking to them. Uh, these are Jews who, it says, had believed in Jesus, which is kind of a... Uh, an implication that they were having a little trouble hanging on to that faith. Um, they were typical of the Jews of the time. Uh, like always, like anybody really, and this is still true to this day, some believed Jesus, some did not. And then there were a bunch of other ones in the middle that sort of thought they did partly believe Jesus and in the end, uh, when they were pushed to decide, then they couldn't do it. They couldn't believe him finally. And, and it's because he always said these difficult things. The almost believers, if you want to call them that, didn't believe him when he said his word was truth. Now, they probably weren't too upset about that. But he said the truth sets you free if you held to it. And that was the part that caused them trouble. They didn't believe that they weren't free already. They couldn't imagine that a child of Abraham could be ever a slave of anything. Of course, that uh, ran them into some trouble because if you think about their history at all, you know about slavery to Egypt and slavery to Philistines and slavery to Amorites and slavery uh, finally to uh, Babylonians and to Assyrians and to Greeks, and to, uh, well, the list is long. And, and, you know, in this particular moment, there was a, uh, an argument to be made that they were slaves, in a sense, to the Romans. So them thinking they'd never been slaves to anything is a little silly. But they couldn't imagine being slaves to their errors, which is what Jesus was implying, to their sins, because he said, if you sin, then you're a slave to sin, and they just weren't buying it. Okay, so this, there's a, a, a very important piece of this that applies to all of us as well. I, I, uh, let me ask, uh, have you ever had a moment where you wondered if you were good enough for God? Because, you know, it's a fair question. Looking over your history, honestly, and what you suppose might be your future, can you imagine yourself ready for heaven because you've been that good? Uh, there's no way I could say that. Uh, some people do, though. They actually think that they're good enough. And, and what if you weren't good enough? If that's what you're thinking, you know you have never been good enough, but what should God do with you if you know that you're not good enough? Uh, 
like these almost but not really believers in Jesus, you're just like them in the sense that you sin, you sin a lot, you do all kinds of things. Uh, if you, you just go back to the Sermon on the Mount and find yourself to be angry at someone, Jesus calls that murder, uh, lusting after anything that you see in a magazine or on a billboard, and that makes you an adulterer, and, and the list is long and important, and there's no way you can avoid any of the commandments because you always have broken them. This is not new. You are a slave to sin. You cannot stop it. There's nothing you can do for yourself to stop it. At least it's got to be so if you believe the true and holy word of your Lord Jesus Christ. He says you're a slave to sin. I think that pretty much means you're a slave to sin. Now, you know what else is true? You have no chance whatsoever <laughs> to break that pattern unless Christ himself sets you free. There is no other way. You can do nothing without him. He says that too. These people that argued with him argue for nothing in emptiness without any cause. Uh, can you actually have a, a winning outcome if you are arguing with God? I, th I think it's a safe bet you're going to lose the argument. Whether you accept that or not is another thing. Uh, but see, that's what they're doing. He said how they could be free if they just believed first that they were slaves to sin. That's the first step. You know that you're slaves to sin. That's just his word. It's only a part of it, but it is his word, and therefore it must be so, and so you must believe it to be free. Or at least that's the beginning. Abide in that word, his word, God's word, and Jesus himself says you are his disciples. If you just abide, stay, remain, hold to his word. All of Christ's disciples have been made free of sin by God's own forgiveness, which he's promised, forgiveness sealed in the blood of the Son, which proves it to be so, and so you, Christ's disciples, are indeed free. Now, it, you should understand that it's not typical that disciples uh, are chosen by rabbis. That was not normally the case. It still is not normally the case. Usually, the way things happened is uh, uh, someone who decided to be a disciple of a rabbi chose the rabbi because it was uh, useful to him in some way or other. But that is not what has happened to you all. Something completely different, in fact, has happened to you all. As Jesus says to his disciples, you did not choose him. Just to think back, even through the times when he was choosing his disciples, he's the one that said, follow me. It wasn't what they were thinking that got them there. It was what Jesus was thinking. In fact, it kind of surprised them most of the time. But despite appearances, he, God, Christ, chose you. He chose you to be his own holy and sacred forgiven saints. And this he accomplished in his blood, the blood of his own crucified body, and it is so. Salvation has been paid in full by Christ himself. Freedom for you has been fully ransomed. You were slaves to sin, and this is true no longer. You all have become not only Christ's disciples, but more than that, his holy bride, his own sacred body, his own dear children forever. In Luther's day, the church taught that you could, of all things, buy your forgiveness with money. Free yourself from sin with money. Uh, he really got upset about this, and that's where the 95 Theses are hanging on the door. Of, that's the reason. 
But, you know, think about this just a moment. Try, sometime, buying Christ's blood. I, I can't even imagine how you would do that if you could find it to do it. Uh, and, and then, of course, what's it worth? Well, way more than anybody could ever pay for it. Uh, the thing that's really good is a, is a gift. It has always been a gift. He gave up his life. He had his body broken. He shed his own blood, and he gave it all to you, his chosen ones, his disciples, his free ones, his children, you. You have had Christ's blood the whole time. He gave it to you for free, and so it is that you are his disciples. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.